what the motley mob saw that day was an old rugged cross. What heaven saw that day was an inverted sword with the hilt in the hand of the great judge and the point piercing the earth through the head of that old serpent called the devil and Satan, piercing also the note of our indebtedness of sin and burying it in the earth of Calvary. What the mob saw that day was an old rugged cross, but what heaven saw that day was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. In Eden, Satan had said, take, eat. But hours before Calvary, Jesus had said, take, eat. When the thieves of Eden partook of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they were turned out of paradise. When the thief on the cross partook of the tree of the cross, he was turned into paradise. What the mob saw that day was an old garden littered with garbage where lepers walked. But when heaven looked down, they saw Eden. But Eden with the marks of the fall, thorns, nakedness, the curse, sorrow, separation and the sword of death. What the motley mob saw was a carpenter from Nazareth who turned rebel and heretic. But what heaven saw was the second Adam. Had not Adam fallen asleep on the afternoon of the sixth day, had not his side been opened that he might have a bride? And here is the second Adam, and he's fallen asleep, and his side is opened, and from his side comes the blood and the water, symbolising the justification and the sanctification that would make his bride the church. Yes, they only saw a carpenter, the Nazarene, but heaven saw the second Abel, the good shepherd, murdered by his brother while he was yet young. Heaven saw Noah, the only righteous man in the world, but his family was saved because of his righteousness. Heaven saw the second Isaac, three days under the sentence of death, this beloved only son, only true son, who went with his father to Moriah, the same place where Christ would die, carrying the wood on his shoulders on which he was to be offered up and delivered as in resurrection to his father. Heaven saw the second Joseph in his trouble associated with two, a butler and a baker, one of whom would be saved and the other would be lost. And now this Joseph, two thieves, one will be saved and the other lost. Heaven saw the second Moses who cried, forgive their sin, if not blot me out of the book. And the second Moses is being blotted out of the book for three days and three nights. Heaven saw the second Samson, a pillar on the left and a pillar on the right, who willingly bows his head, who willingly gives himself to death, that his people might be delivered from their foes. And so the second Samson bows his head and says, it is finished, and overcomes principalities and powers, and wipes out the devil and sin and death. As heaven watched, that old rugged cross became an altar, as soon as the blood spurted, Christ was the intercessory priest. His first words, Father, forgive them, 
priest as they continue to watch the old rugged cross becomes a throne. Is it not written above it? The king of the Jews. Had, I, had they not given him a mock scepter and a robe, brazenly knelt before him? But here the king, his heart will ruin, reign over the hearts of millions because no one ever loved like Jesus loved. As heaven watches, the cross becomes a mercy seat, which it is called in Romans 3.25, our version say sacrifice or propitiation. The Greek word says mercy seat. The mercy seat came between the great judge and the broken law, and the cross stands between us and our judge and our broken law. As heaven watches, they see a triumphant chariot. For according to Colossians 2.15, he overcame principalities and powers, made a show of them openly, triumphing in his cross. An allusion to the Roman triumph where the Roman generals would come in leading their enemies behind them. And so Christ on the cross turns it into a triumphal chariot. As heaven watches, the cross becomes a pulpit just seven sentences. What a sermon. What a spiritual masterpiece. All the doctrines of the Christian faith are there. All the guidance we need for Christian living are in that sermon. And as he finishes the sermon, perhaps he looked toward the penitent thief as if to say, you don't have to be good to be saved. You do have to be saved to be good. 2 Corinthians 5.14 says, If one died for all, then all died. As heaven watched, they saw all earth's millions. Over the millenniums of earth, they were all on that cross in their representative. When he died, we all died, legally. We must receive it. We must accept it. Then it is so. We have paid for our sins in our representative. Our sins of yesterday, today and tomorrow, if we will believe it. If one died for all, then all died. Men have made of religion a drudgery, a grind, a slavery. But true religion is a revelry, a festival, an everlasting song.